dude, I got the best idea for a Kessel video. Okay, here's what we're gonna If it's a list of hot dog jokes, get out of my face. I it, it, you're in a mood. Get go shut up! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, here's what we're gonna do. Here's <laughs> this team! Alright, so there's a lot going on in the free agency market. The Leafs made a bunch of moves. Not gonna talk about any of them. We're gonna do that in a few days when all the dust settles. Right now, it's all about one thing and one thing only. Phil Kessel. And the Phil Kessel trade, which sends him to the Pittsburgh. The <laughs> Phil Kessel's a Pittsburgh penguin! <laughs> Okay, here's, we're gonna, I'm upset, obviously. <laughs> here's the thing, oh, does Steve not think the Leafs got enough in the trade? What does Steve think of the trade? Screw the trade! Believe it or not, the trade is not what's important right now. Do you know what's important? The number six. Six is the number of seasons Phil Kessel was a Toronto Maple Leaf. Six is the amount of consecutive times Kessel was the leading scorer on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Six is the amount of points Kessel was the leader by in his first season as a Leaf. Despite missing the first 12 games of the season recovering from shoulder surgery, and the next leading scorer was a defenseman, and six plus one is the amount of years that the Leafs have to retain $1.2 million of Phil Kessel's salary. $1.2 million, by the way, is 600000 times two. This trade, what this means, forget whether the return was good, fair, or a bust. What this trade means is an era wasted. Someone tweeted this at me. Look at this. Look at all of this. For what? Listen, Brian Burke got fired. All right, you could call that the end of whatever era. Not necessarily true. An NHL GM gets fired, their work lives on. Hell, the Chicago Blackhawks fired their GM and willy-nilly started a dynasty. Really, I gotta stop bringing up the Chicago Blackhawks. Like, what they do is something my team could ever attain. And I'm doing some yelling and screaming, and I'm gonna be doing some yelling and screaming about the Leafs management, and it's not necessarily this Leafs management. That wouldn't be fair. But most of my childhood was spent begging for a proper winger for Matt Sundin, and the end entire Phil Kessel era was spent without a proper number one center for him. Oh, he's fat. He's got a bad attitude. He's lazy. He's this. He's that. Look at the players around him, stupid! Let's pretend Phil Kessel is all those things. He is fat. He is lazy. He is a jerk and he doesn't care about anything. He was the Leafs' best player for six years! How many fat, lazy, bad attitude players get to be the best player on their team for six years? It's almost like he wasn't the problem! And here we are this summer, 2015, and we're doing what? We're sitting here in the middle of a Leaf rebuild, which is a good thing and the right thing to do. But what are we also waiting on? Like, what am I checking Twitter for as I'm shooting this video? That's right, trades! Trades for what? Who's getting traded? Let me see, who are we for? Oh, that's right, every long-term contract Dave known has ever signed! People are getting mad about this trade. What a small thing to be upset about in this scenario. First round picks, those come and go. Blue chip prospects, those come and go. Even elite scoring wingers. Those come and go. What you cannot get me back is six years of cheering for this dog pile. And what I can't get is a brain smart enough to stop doing it. And the Leafs are taking advantage of that. How dare you? Um, we're gonna okay. I had to get that out. I had to get that out. I had, I had, to, I had to come out. I had to did leave. I had to get back down to earth. I had to get back to where I was. I had to get back to normal. What's normal? You know, normal is the Leafs being terrible. No. Six years, man. Six, 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 over half a decade. I mean, we've been making fun of the Boston Bruins all week for getting young talent, having them for like three years, and then trading them. But at least they do the first two parts! And here's the other problem I'm dealing with. I agree with so much of what the Leafs' current management group has done. Almost all of it, frankly. And I'm sitting here doing two things. One, waiting for them to do something monumentally stupid, because it's just what I've been programmed to do, guys. And two hoping they do something stupid because I just don't think I can handle the heartbreak of fully putting my faith in them and then they screw it all up. Hey man, they just got here. Give them a chance. I gave the last guys a chance. And the ones before that and before that and before that. Holy Jeff Finger. So it's supposed to be about the present. It's supposed to be about the future. It's supposed to be about moving forward, but I can't help but be pissed off of six years wasted. Oh, but what about that one time they made the playoffs? The way it ended, I felt worse than in the years where they missed the playoffs entirely. Like, look at this. Look at this. Look at freaking Look at this. Look at the... Sorry, Don. Look at this. Look at the savior of the franchise. No collector's item. Why would I throw it on the floor then? You know what I just realized is every time we host a party, my buddy Andy likes to come in here and like flip the toys over and turn down the pucks. Thanks, Andy. I'm not going through a hard time right now. Oh, look, he turned over my cup. That's the most cup movement we've seen in the greater Toronto area in the last 50 years. Ah! <sighs> <sighs>
I hear Cass Perry Kapanen is supposed to be pretty good. And Scott Harrington may turn out to be quite good. Uh, the ceiling is not supposed to be that high, but I mean, legitimate NHL player. Top four defenseman, that would be lovely. Nick Spalling could be a nice stopgap. The first and third round pick, although conditional, will probably end up being just that, a first and third round pick. And I mean, the Leafs also got to dump contracts like Tim Erickson and first round pick Tyler Biggs! First round pick Tyler Biggs. Tyler Biggs. A lot of people hate this deal. I, I don't hate it. I don't love it either. I think it'd be a fine trade, maybe even with the retained salary if the Leafs didn't have to give up that second round pick. Or even if they swapped. I could I could forgive the Leafs for doing one of those things. I don't like the fact that they had to do both. I mean, the Leafs are probably going to suck next year and the Penguins are probably going to be pretty good. So the Leafs get the Penguins first, the Penguins get the Leafs second. So you're basically just moving up a few spots in the draft. Like sometimes with the draft we get so caught up in first round, second round, third round. No, they're moving up a few slots. Probably ten at the most. So if you look at it as the Leafs moving up five to ten slots and getting a third, it's not quite as appealing. All I know is this about all the cap space the Leafs just freed up. Go ahead and win your cup this year, Tampa. You might want to giddy up on that, just saying. Pittsburgh Penguins fans, here is my honest opinion of Phil Kessel. He's got me blocked on Twitter, and I met him briefly once in person to the point where we didn't even exchange names. I do not know Phil Kessel, so I will not pretend to know Phil Kessel. I know what I've seen on the ice. You are getting a player who has not missed an NHL game since returning from shoulder surgery in 2009. He is automatically one of the fastest players on your team, if not the fastest although, I mean, Sidney Crosby, right? He might even have the best shot in your team as well. And yes, I remember the whole Crosby thing and Malkin thing. Don't use him in the shootout. He's not very good at those. And part of the reason for that is he doesn't really have a whole lot of options in his arsenal. You don't see him try to deke the goalie very often. You rarely see him take a backhand, and I can't remember the last time he took a slap shot. All he's got is one of the nastiest wristers and snappers in the entire league. So maybe not in the shootout, but during actual play, he's pretty damn good. Woe is he. Many blindly label him as bad defensively and lazy and lackadaisical and many blindly defend him for being none of those things. Both of those groups of people are wrong. Kessel is a great damn player and yeah, sometimes he takes a shift off. I mean, guys. Guys, do you, you don't watch him? And I want to say, well, yeah, a lot of the forwards Kessel played with weren't that great defensively either. Meanwhile, he's going to Pittsburgh, and I would say that's probably their number one issue, isn't it? Difference being, instead of worrying about Tyler Bozak down the middle, you're worrying about Crosby or Malkin. You can even put him on the third line because it's funny, and why not have an Olympian on every line? You're getting one of the best goal scorers in the league. In a catastrophically bad season for him personally, on a catastrophically bad team, he scored 25 goals. If you got a player who's disappointed with 25 goals, you probably got a good player. To go with those disappointing 25 goals, he also had 36 assists. His career high in assists is 45. Take it from anybody who's watched the Leafs over the last six seasons, even Kessel's biggest detractors, the most underrated part of his game is his playmaking ability. But here's another thing you gotta keep in mind, Pittsburgh, and this is very important. You're on the freaking clock. When the 2015-2016 NHL season begins, both Phil Kessel and Sidney Crosby will be 28 years old and Evgeny Malkin will be 29. Marc-Andre Fleury will turn 31 less than two months into the season. And Chris Letang, oh that little guy, just turned 28. Your time to win is now. And I certainly wouldn't mind watching you hoist the Stanley Cup because I think it would be nice to see, it would be a great story, and it would piss so many people off. Friggin' win the Stanley Cup in Pittsburgh and fly over to Toronto, walk up to a hot dog vendor, buy the whole stand and go, how's this for your damn hot dog? Huh? So best of luck, Phil. You're kind of weird, but you're really good at hockey. And Casperi, I'm sorry for what Darcy Tucker did to your dad. Hey, look at that, a new leaf with links to playoff memories.